So in the last two sessions, you heard about products, so Vega technologies and our technology in general. And this now is more about uh, an elementary concepts of uh, image quality. And the point is, why are we doing that? Um, because this is, so to speak, a, a supplement or a, a, a replacement for the, for the control show. Uh, on the one hand, um, we want to inform our customers how to read all these specs, sheets and specifications maybe you heard about yesterday and the day before and which you normally see on trade shows so that it's easier to you to understand what is meant. And the other thing is this is also you could read you could take this as a trial specimen for our webinars we are going to offer in the future which are mainly focused not only on our machine but on the technology in general. And so this is the first one. This is of the type we also give our own colleagues and our uh, customers who may order this or, or get it as a package with the system or so. Uh, how to describe um, image quality. So this is a wide field and today I will start with resolution and sharpness and magnification. Just to jump directly into that, I show you four examples of X-ray images. So we have here the lower right corner one which has a, a yellow frame and three others. And you see what we change between these four images. It shows an aluminum plate with a wire penetrometer, which looks like this. Uh, so these are aluminum, aluminum wires on an aluminum plate. And you see that this is maybe what you would like. It's sharp and it does not have enough noise and what we, not, not much noise. And what we changed here, we increased the unsharpness to the right and the noise to the top. So you see, if we increase the unsharpness, the, the wires become wider. And if we increase the noise, it becomes, crisp, uh, uh, say, kind of noisy in a way, and it's not so easy to see anymore. So you might say, why don't we just take the lower right corner and everything is okay? But you must also have in mind, these images takes 10 times longer and it's twice as expensive as this one, for example, or as this one. So in that sense, um, it is important to, to know what image quality is and uh, to find the right one you need. And maybe you see also that this here, this wire, for example, looks, looks much more darker than here. So the contrast is also influenced by the sharpness. This means that unsharpness, noise and contrast, which are the three main things which we might use to describe this, are somehow interconnected. And this also tells us that image quality is not a property of your system alone. It's a property of your image. That means what is on the image, which object object you have, and uh, which um, under which condition you took the image. How how long is the integration time, the exposure time, and what are the the features of the object? And I want to talk today about the influence of the sharpness or unsharpness, as we call it correctly, on the image quality. I will um, keep a path along the standards because this is the best way to have well-defined uh, quantities to describe that. So after a short introduction, I will describe how the total unsharpness of an X-ray system is measured by the standard E2015 from ISDM, the measurement of total CT unsharpness, so the equivalent to that for CT. Then I will explain a bit the relation between unsharpness detector, spatial resolution, these are terms I will introduce, and MTF. I will show how the detector basic spatial, spatial resolution will be measured according to this standard, and how we measure the focal spot size, most delicate thing and how you can calculate from all these things the expected sharpness of your X-ray system or any X-ray systems. And maybe then uh, talk about a little bit what else could affect the resolution or sharpness. So first, a little bit about the total unsharpness and resolution, the concept of that. So the unsharpness may be described as, as the capability of an X-ray system to differentiate periodic line patterns of strongly absorbing material, as you see it here. So a dark one, a light one, dark one, light one. And the fineness of such a pattern, 
So in, 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 in fact, the resolution is measured in line per, per millimeter. So the finest grid you would still see would be your resolution in line pairs per millimeter. A line pair is one dark one and one bright one. So this is one line pair. The width of one of these lines, uh, assumed there, if when we assume they are, have all the same widths, we would call the basic basic uh, basic resolution in that sense. So you should not confuse this with detectability as the effects of image noise are suppressed when we are um, talking about sharpness. Now, this is a, a mathematical or geometrical concept, but not a real definition. In technical terms, or in experimental physics, or in technology, engineering, you need a, a, a clear definition of what you are talking about. And this is best done in, a, in defining a procedure how to measure it. And this is done, for example, in this standard. So you would always refer to such a standard if you talk about any quantity like total unsharpness or basic spatial resolution here in this case in radiography and radioscopy. So first we need to define, need to define our pattern. And this is done in the standard two. And such an object we use looks like this. And I recommend to have a view, look in the standard. I cannot show it here for, for, for copyright reasons, but it consists of uh, pairs of wires which have a certain diameter D and always these two wires have the same distance D as the diameter is. So such a thing we call an element and these elements are numbered. So they call D1, D2 and so on, D13. And then in the standard is defined the distance between the wires and the um, uh, and the diameter of the wires, which is the same. And then you have the corresponding unsharpness value here. For example, this is one wire and one blank in between and one void. The basic spatial, spatial, spatial resolution is exactly the same as the wire diameter. And here you have the line pair value, which is the re reciprocal of this uh, unsharpness by definition in that sense. So with this in principle, now we have our pattern and can uh, do measurements. Now the second step is how to do, to make the image. This is described in the standard and uh, there is also described how to evaluate it. You put it somewhere at exactly the position at the distance from the, from the, focal, from, from the tube where you want to do your, uh, where you want to put your sample later. And then you get an image of the test pattern on your detector film or whatever you have at with a certain magnification, but this is not important here. So the magnification would be the focus detector distance divided by the focus, focus object distance. I'll come back to this later. And then you get an X-ray image like this. This is an X-ray image of this device. And what we do now, we make such as, we define such a stripe. And in this stripe, we average in this direction up and down and then create a line plot of the intensity on this stripe. It's important to tilt this by say two to five degrees. It's described in the standard to um, avoid aliasing effects. And in this case, the image noise is suppressed by averaging over the width of this stripe. So we have many pixels. So the statistics is quite good in such a case. And then how to evaluate it? Evaluate it. The simplest way is just to look for the finest um, uh, pair of wires you still can differentiate between and then take the next one. And this would be the resolution. Also, you could also say the first one you can't see. Or you try to interpolate with the first, with, with the two last, you still can see. And then you get, you, you calculate the distance of a wire, which would exactly give you a modulation of 20%. I will show you this in a minute. And the, the latest method in the latest version of the standard is you make a plot like this. You check the, the modulation, which would be in a way the depth of this dip here in between these two wires uh, in relation to the height here. And you put this in another diagram and fit a polynomial of rank two to it. And where this hits the 20% line, this is your resolution. So in this case, this would be 220 micrometers is the way how it is evaluated. And this is what normally is given as the resolution of a system if you use this method. And it's called 
the spatial resolution basic or basic spatial resolution. And this I indicates that it's done by this interpolation method. So it indicates the method. So this is say what you what you normally do. A quick check could be just you look here at which what which wire pair you still see and then take the, the next one. This would be uh, the simplest method so for a quick check. Now how to how to to use this in computer tomography? So it's not so easy. I tried to to scan such a wire uh, double duplex wire gauge. It's possible, but it's a it's a mess to evaluate this because it's very flat and so on. There are other pieces, test pieces, and, and patterns like a cylinder with holes or a cylinder with square holes. All these things are more or less feasible, but diff difficult to manufacture and also difficult to evaluate because you have to align everything and so on. And almost unnoticed, I think it was 20 years ago, um, there was made a standard ASTM E1695 in, in 95, this is what it means here, the number, which has a much more elegant um, way to find this out using the MTF. And I want to show this to you because it has the, the a real advantage that the, how to say the phantom you need, the, the test piece is very simple. It is just a ball or as it's in a new version of the standard, a rod of, material of the same kind you want to inspect. For example, you see here a tomographic slice of a rod of aluminum. And you see it, the only precondition is it has to be round. The diameter does not matter and there is no, no requirements on, on anything in, in terms of straightness or so. It only needs to be round. And then what we do, we analyze the the transition here from the material to the to the air. So we, we, we look at the gray value slope at the edge and we use the full parameter. That means we eliminate the, um, the noise here in this case by averaging over all these pixels around here. And what we get is what we call the edge response function. So if you, if you walk around this, this uh, parameter, you get here transition from the normalized inner value, so from the material down to air, and this creates such a slope curve here. Now if we differentiate this, we get the so-called line spread function. This is something how to say the, the unsharpness distribution around this edge line. And then by some mathematical methods you can show, if you do the Fourier transform of that, you get the so-called MTF, the modulation transfer function. This, this function describes if you have such a pattern with a certain spatial fre frequency as given in line pairs, how much of the contrast of such an object would be transmitted through the system. So in other words, if you have 100% contrast and you have a spatial frequency, say of two, in this case, on your screen, you would see uh, a contrast not of 100%, but say of 80%, whatever you read here. And now by definition, we say we look at the 10% threshold and take these line pairs here. And this is what we call the MTF10 value or the resolution uh, at this um, for this system, which made this um, tomographic slice. And this can be then trans, uh, um, trans, transferred to um, a sh an unsharpness or a, a resolution value, as I will show in a minute. So this is the way it's done. It's mathematically may maybe a little more uh, complicated or a little more ambitious than the other things, but it has the advantage that such uh, object is very simple to make and it's maybe 100 euros or so, so you can, can make this very easily. And it is also easy to handle to make the scans and so on. And I show you here now a real measurement. This, this is an output of our software to do so. And you see here is the MTF. It starts at 100, goes down, and now we look at the 10% value, it's 7.02. 7 this is this value. And from the theory we know, 
the, the total unsharpness in the sense we saw it in ASTM 2002 just before is just a reciprocal of that so it would be 142 micrometers and you see these standards are made such that these values can be transferred into each other so it doesn't matter whether you use this method or that method the result should be if there are no further contributions should be the same and it is as as we checked let's uh, say uh, quite consistent now you saw already have now uh, uh, unwillingly or willingly but not not not, not so much uh, detail uh, did, did not explain in so much detail introduced spatial basic spatial resolution uh, unsharpness and so on and mtf and now we would maybe it makes sense to have a table how these are related so very easy is to see the relation between the isrb and the total unsharpness it's just by a factor of two so this is a line pair and this is just one line to, so to speak so this is easy to remember but it's important to know that because these two terms are quite often confused because more or less the, the, the x-ray tubes are given in ut in u and the detectors are defined in srb so this sometimes can uh, happen, can lead to, to misunderstandings. And the MTF is just a recipro reciprocal of the UT. And hence, it's the reciprocal also of two times ISRB. So in this table, it enables you to calculate this and to, to, to transfer this into each other. So we saw the main sources of unsharpness here uh, have been out of the detector which has a certain uh, pixel size or resolution and the X-ray source, which has a focal spot size. This is what we all know. And this is the reason why these numbers are specified in the, in the spec sheets. But now how can we conclude from that to the resolution the system will really have in a certain case? I said it's a property of the system, but plus the sample and plus the operator. And for that reason, we uh, first need to have these two specifications and know how they are calculated to know how we can further process them to find out um, these uh, the total unsharpness. So first for the detector, it's quite simple. The SRB of the detector is just the SRB of the system as measured directly on the surface of the detector. So at magnification one. And the practice 2002 describes how to do that. It's cited in ASTM 2597, for two, which uh, describes the specification of detectors. So you put this uh, double X wire gauge onto the detector in an angle of uh, between two and five degrees. And then you have this pattern at the same size, uh, this pattern, the image of the pattern at the same size, and you evaluate this in the way I described before. You make this diagram, put in here all these uh, modulations, so the, the ratio between the dip and the height of this uh, peak, and then you get the detector SRB. And this is what we consider really the SRB of the detector. You see that I did not mention so often pixel size yet. Sure, it's somehow related to that, but the pixel size is not the resolution of the detector. It is just to say, you could say a mechanical manufacturing feature, which is a precondition for the resolution, but is not exactly the resolution. And I gave to show that I gave you here some examples. Just take two, one or two very interesting things. For example, here, this green one is our dynamic 41 200 detector. It has a pixel size of 200. And if you measure according to this rule, the SRB, so the real resolution, it's also 200. So the ratio between the two is one. Now, there are other detectors available. For example, there have been some, but, uh, so I removed the name here, which has impressing 127. But if you measure it according to this method, it's only 162. So the difference between these two is much smaller as you might think. And this shows you that maybe this detector has some other features you like. And so it's always a way to, uh, to compare and to balance these different uh, um, specifications. So it's much more important to look at the SRB than on the pixel size. Or look at this one here. This has 100 micron. 
And now you might think if I bin it, it has the same resolution as this one, but this is not the case. It has 126, so this times two. So the result would be 226 because they overlap in the middle. And then this would be a little worse than this. So this is interesting to know, uh, to, to, I think, to know that you should rather compare the SRB than the pixel size. And this, in the end, is what gives you the resolution or what influences the resolution in the X-ray images as well as in the TCT slices. So this is the detector side. Now we look at the focal spot size of the tube, which also gives you, um, say, a contribution to the unsharpness. If we have such a simple X-ray tube, we know that the um, electrons come here from the filament and hit the, the anode here in the area of the target. And then we have a spot here where the electrons hit the target. This is what we call the focal spot because from this area, the X-rays are emitted. So this gives you the size of the X-ray source. And now you could, can imagine that this is difficult to measure. You cannot go here and, and see this, or it's not, not, at least it's not easy and it's not very practical to do so. So we need, a, again, an indirect method to check that. To do so, I need to explain to, to you a little bit what, what, what is magnification and how this magnification influences the unsharpness of the image, because this is often not understood. So magnification, by definition, is the image size divided by the object size. And now you see you have two triangles here, two triangles, this one and this one, this big one, this one. And they are similar because they have all the same angles. So we can see that the FDD over FOD is exactly the ratio between image and object. And so we know our magnification. So this is easy, I think. It's a little more complicated if you now look on the effect of the source size. So, the, so we consider the source or the focal spot. This should be, be represented here by this little arrow. And you see there are beams going from the lower end and from the upper end, and they create here an unsharpness. If you look at this beam, which just strives the, which just hits the edge here, of this size, which we call geometric unsharpness, UG. And now we want to know how big is that. And this, we can again use triangles, this one and this one. And then you see A and B are like UG and phi, so the source size. And then we can make another one. And then we are again back to our FDD and F FOD. So we have FDD minus FOD. This is this part divided by this FOD. And the result is, interestingly, magnification minus one. So it's not maybe some would easily, naively one would expect maybe just V, it's V minus one. And so we have this formula for that. If you look at the, at the image, we always consider the image in the scale of the object. So we have a magnified image, so maybe a small wire of 20 microns, maybe two millimeters wide. So we have to transfer it back to the image. And so we can say the, the geometric unsharpness in the image is UG divided by this V. So for example, this may be two millimeters, but here we are on the scale of the object. So we have always to divide this by V. And uh, this is the reason why we talk in the unsharpness in so small numbers, while the unsharpness of the shadow and detector may be much bigger. And now the, the idea of measuring, or one idea of measuring the, the focal spot size is would be measuring the, the unsharpness here and then calculated by this formula, the size of the focal spot here. Another idea is, which is uh, realized in the in the standard I want to talk about, is to make a very small object, which is a pinhole, which has almost size zero, and then just look for the unsharpness. In effect, you would have an image of the, of the source here, and then you can measure this focal spot, and then divide it by the magnification, minus one, uh, uh, by, by this formula, and then you get the size of your, uh, your source, actually. And such a device looks like this. Here is your X-ray tube. This is the electron beam axis. The camera looks like this. Here you have the pinhole on the top here. 
And here on the bottom, we put the film. In the, in the standard, this is exactly described where to put this, how long the distances need to be, how the orientation must be, what kind of film you need, what is the exposure, all these details are described in such a standard to make it as say, rigid and as uh, reproducible as possible. Here is a detailed view of the camera. Here you have a, 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 a screen to see the X-ray beam. And here you would put, put the film. And you see here, if you look from a certain direction onto the anode, which is tilt, so you also see that it depends a little bit on the angle. So it has to be right angle, but on the other hand, you see by tilting the, uh, the, the tube a little bit, you could influence that. So these things have to be taken into account. And then such an X-ray image would look in the end like this. So this distorted thing in the center is the image of the focal spot. Uh, it's not really a spot, it's something. And now the question is how to evaluate that. So it's not so easy. You, you just say, okay, we could look here at the at this scale and say it's two, it's two millimeters or so. But there is also a, a detailed procedure in the standard how to evaluate that, which is uh, not very difficult, but needs to be followed exactly. So what you can do or what is described in the standard, uh, it is um, you have the image of the focal spot on your detector, for example, and then you to take a kind of virtual slit and then you make line profiles, you add in this direction. That this means you add over the, the focal spot in this direction and move the slit, the virtual slit in this direction. So always you add along this line and then you get this profile of the, of the focal spot in that direction. And you do this in the other direction, direction too, so in this direction. And then you sum up all the intensities here. This means you integrate here and draw the integral here, and then you go to 48%, 16%, and you draw a line and look where it hits the zero and 100%, and this would be the width of your focal spot. Or you take this distance and multiply it with the correction factor. You see, it's not so, not so simple, but this is said to be the most reproducible method. But this is difficult to perform, as you see, you need a digital detector, you need some software and so on. A simpler method would be this one. You just make a box around your, uh, your focal spot image and then look for A and B. And this, from this, you can calculate to your focal spot dimensions. And maybe you already see the problem where exactly to put this box. If you have ever seen such an image, you see this here. This always has a kind of little halo and so on. So what, what, what they normally do, this is said to be equivalent to this standard here, EN12543-2. They say, okay, you, you, you take the 10% threshold. So you go inwards here until you have 10% of the full intensity and you use this as, um, as the threshold, so like this. And all what, what follows now and calculation assumes that this is, has this Gaussian shape, this bell curve shape, and then you go to the 10% threshold here and this would be your focal spot size. But the problem is, or is see, as you might know, is it could look like this. It's not necessarily a, a bell shape or realistically something like that. And now the already a problem could arise what is if this here is very big or very long or so? So this is a constant source of discussions how to exactly evaluate this. I just want to warn you. So if you talk about a uh, focal spot, you always need to exactly ask which standard did you use and which uh, rules did you use? Did you make exceptions or changes just to make keep things comparable? All these things can be done. I have no prejudice concerning that, but you need to know that there are different ways to evaluate that in practice. So, but then in the end, we have a value here for this phi, for this focal spot size. And we have the SRB of the detector. So in principle, we have everything we need to have to calculate the total unsharpness. And now this looks maybe at first sight a little complicated. It's just to summarize everything. So we have our object here. And we have the source with a certain size, focal spot size here. And this creates here an unsharpness, which is defined by these two uh, turquoise, turquoise lines here, these blue lines. And then this is blurred a little further by the pixel size, or exactly, more exactly, the SRB of the detector. So it's a little wider, as you can see here. And this 
is the so-called unsharpness, to total unsharpness, UT. And this we can calculate back to the object size, which would be the unsharpness in the image. And this is what you measure with ASTM E2002 in the very beginning of this talk with the double X wire gauge. And this should be comparable. And it, as you will see, it is. So we use as an input the source size and the SRB of the detector and the magnification. And the formula, which is given in ASTM 1000, it, it looks a little different there, so I adapted it to this, to this nomenclature and terminology, uh, looks like this here on this side. It, maybe it looks a little complicated, but in, if you break it down, it's actually quite simple. You take the UG caused by the source and the SRB by the detector, take it by two, so you have the unsharpness of the detector, and then you add it and take this, uh, you add the cubes, and then you take the, 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 the cubic root. So this is the rule. And um, so you add it, you add the cubes and take the cubic root, and then I put in all the formula we had. So we have y mi v minus one times phi, which is the unsharpness of the caused by the tube and the unsharpness caused by the detector SRB. And then we have this total formula. You see here it's divided by V to have it with respect to the object scale. In the ISO standard, it looks very diff diff similar, except you have the squares. And these squares, just to say it, come from this uh, Gauss, Gauss shape, from this bell shape of the curve, which you assume, so it is a little more physically justified. This still exists. I heard there was a big debate. It's more or less for historical reasons, because there are so many objects in the field which have been determined using that. So uh, they stayed with that, especially since um, it does not make a big difference, as you will see. So with this formula, having this and this which you can take from the spec sheets you can calculate the unsharpness of your object if at a certain magnification and just to give you an example with our starting images here so this is our nice image we liked maybe more than this and here we had an srb of the detector it's 200 micrometers a focal spot size of 15 micrometers a magnification of 13 and the srb image calculated using this formula is 17 micrometers or UT, you see here UT, 34. And this wire is 77 and this is 156 micrometers. You see we have a nicely sharp image at least at this on this view here. And here I, I misadjusted the focal spot. You can do this in microfocus tubes from outside to about 300 and put if you put in everything, you get here an unsharpness of 280 and you see it fits approximately. So if this is 156, it looks at least three times as wide as this. So this is consistent. And you see by changing the sharpness, I change the contrast. Not everybody is always aware of that, that this is the main effect of the, of the unsharpness. So if you had a second wire here, you wouldn't differentiate it anymore. Well, you couldn't differentiate it anymore because it is too close to that, the wire gets wider. Here it would be still possible, but also because the contrast of the gap in between the two would be diminished and maybe vanish in the noise. And you see here, this one is now very wide com 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 compared to that and looks, looks less contrasted. So the noise in both images is the same. So this is the effect of the unsharpness in an image. But still, you see all the wires. That is, this means that detailed detectability is not only a property of the unsharpness. You can have a very high detailed detectability with a relatively unsharp image, provided contrast is high enough and noise is low enough. So this is the reason why these terms are separated. And now you could also do your calculations to, to, to check out what this means in practice. There are tubes tubes which are not microfocus tubes where you can adjust the focal spot size but there are also tubes where you where they are fixed for example typical tube would have maybe 400 micron focal spot size micrometers and the SRB of the detector typically could be 200 micrometers as I showed before and now we have here these uh, yellow curves which 
both for ASTM and ISO, you see the difference is not big. It's about 10% here, yeah, so this is not really important. But you see there is, strangely, there is a minimum. It's not such that you think maybe, okay, I have to put it close to the detector because it only has 200 micrometers. It's somewhere in the middle. You see, you have to take this by two. And this, this function, we showed you before, this one here, this one, it has a minimum here. So you would put, if you have, for example, in our systems, this would be a V2 max C. You would put it, if you, you choose this focal spot and this detector, you would put it approximately in the center. If you have this combination where you have uh, the big focal spot, 1000 micrometers and there is a B of 100 micrometers, if you have such detector, just to give you a simple example, then you would rather put it as close as possible to the detector. And quite often this is not, cannot be done because the sample also has a certain size. So this is the use of this formula. And you see, I talked about minimum or optimum. And since we have a formula, we can use calculus to find the minimum. And this is what I did here, uh, or not, not me alone, but it was checked by several people because this is lengthy to derive this formula. And then you get these two simple formulas where what is your best magnification? And if you have a certain system, you can calculate which is the best fo focus to object distance to have the best resolution in your system. So this is very helpful then to find out what would be what you could achieve in the end. And another application of this formula, it's not just to torture people, to show you that it has some uh, application. We have this formula. And now suppose we have the detector SRB, which is always specified in um, some, somebody is making noise. M Michael, can you check? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Normally you have the detector SRB, which is which is uh, given with the with the system specs and which does not change a lot over the lifetime of the detector. And this is for for the for the normal user quite difficult to measure. This one here. Some are doing this, which have the requirements. But if you just want to to know what what is approximately the the um, um, focal spots of your tube, you could measure this. You could measure this using ASTM 2002, this duplex wire gauge, and then you can easily calculate this phi. And all these standards are made such that they are, that they are very consistent, maybe within 10%. So it's always, uh, so they, the value are really comparable if you do it the right way. So far, now we have covered the two main contributions to unsharpness, but you know, in practice, you cannot always achieve that. Maybe if you use steel bars or steel weld seams, this is maybe a typical thing you can do, but there are people who are work, work in the field or work with animals or any other samples which are more difficult to handle. It could also be that you have a movement in your setup. For example, some vibration makes the source move if you are working in the field or uh, the object moves just by shrinking, hopping around or whatever. If you have, a, say, maybe something like a plant or so, which changes during the, 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 uh, the, 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 the testing or the investigation, and then the image would move. And this causes an additional sharpness, unsharpness. And you can estimate this again using this formula by adding up all the pot potential unsharpnesses. So for example, if you know this and that, you can find out how much was the drift. Or if you know that there is a vibration, you could put this in here. So this is a very helpful concept. And you can also do this in the, AS, in the ISO version with the squares. And there's another point which I also want to mention. Um, it may happen that you find some reconstruction algorithm somewhere which is not delivered with the system. And the system is specified and you have a certain resolution, you have a certain MTF and so on. And then you try this uh, reconstruction algorithm. And this uh, a reconstruction algorithm can also cause an additional unsharpness. I found sometimes up to 40% if you use just some algorithm you got from somewhere. So you should always be aware if you do a CT that you use an, a reconstruction algorithm you know, but if you change this, you would need to check whether this does not change the sharpness because these reconstruction algorithms have internal filters which may um, affect that. 
uh, in a remarkable uh, way. So this is not just a little bit sometimes. So now I want to summarize this a bit. So what I think is important to know that total line sharpness is two times spatial resolution. This is especially important if you compare focal spot sizes and detector resolution, because for some historical and political reasons, the detectors the manufacturers normally give the, the the basic spatial resolutions, the tube manufacturers, the focal spot size, which is more, more uh, in the concept of unsharpness. The reason may be detector manufacturers wanted to have a specification, which is then again close to the pixel size, which is understandable. The total unsharpness in radiographs in a system at the at the required magnification may be measured with the double X wire gauge following ASTM 2002, which is not too difficult. So you, then you have a real measured value, a defined thing. Uh, in CT, we rather recommend the method as described in ASTM 1441 plus E6095. Um, Waygate Technologies is providing with the systems a software to do so. Others, other manufacturers may do the same. And I know that VG, for example, also has such a feature. So this is uh, volume graphics, if I may, may say that. And um, the main contributions to the total unsharpness are focal spot size and detector SRB. So you, if you know the both and these formulas, you can already predict a lot. And um, the detector SRB, you might check yourself if you want, just by using the same method of E2002 at magnification one, you just attach it on it onto the detector with some tape and do the measurement. This ASTM E1000 formula may be usala, utilized to measure the focal spot indirectly. So you measure uh, SRB, you measure the total unsharpness, and then you can calculate the focal spot size if you want, or the effective focal spot size to be correct. And other influences on sharpness, such as drift, vibration, and processing should also be considered. This is sometimes forgotten. Sometimes you hear complaints about sharpness, and I can tell you, I would say 20% is sample movements because sometimes in CT it's not so easy to fix them properly if it's not just, say, something mechanical. So far, thank you.